Throughport Collective, and I'm here with Chris and Tim, and today we're going to talk to you about some music that we've created, and also we're going to talk a little bit about uh, some new toys, or at least a new toy, uh, from Mr. Tim Grogan there. So welcome, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us. So, Tim, I heard you, uh, you got a visit from the uh, delivery man today. Yeah, the the synth fairy visited. The, the synth fairy. <laughs> <laughs> sure did. The stork brought a really nice big package, and it's it's big. It's sitting right here. Yeah, so let's let's make it big so everyone can see. Yeah, Tim, the you're the first person besides I think Jamie Morton that I know that's got their Oberheim OBX OBX eight. Yeah, I, I congratulations. Thank you. It's uh, it's a delicious synth. I can tell you that. I yeah. lucked I lucked out because I ordered it. I think three weeks ago. I think it took three weeks. I, and I know some people, including yourself, Marshall, that have been waiting for about three months. So don't hate me. I don't know why that happened for me. It just it just I'm did. happy for you, man. That's, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I ordered did. mine. Put a pre order in in um, uh, May. Yeah, May, like middle of May, somewhere around there. So it's been a few months. Yeah, it's like three but, months. Uh, yeah, I'm just glad to see them start showing up for people. I think it's a. I, I got mine from Sweetwater, and maybe they're. I think a lot of people ordered them from Sweetwater, so I don't know if uh, they're just having trouble getting everybody, you know, with the limited supplies. Yeah, so. I wonder if that's maybe how it how it's gotten backed up with them because there's there aren't they like the biggest music supplier? I mean. You would think they would have all kinds uh, of. Uh, if they're uh, not the biggest, bid. they're definitely one of the because. Uh, yeah. Almost everybody I know that's into this, uh, gets stuff from there or has gotten stuff from there, anyways. Yeah, crazy. I don't know. I, so I, I just maybe that's why they're backed up, and I don't know. Mine came from GC Pro, and and it wasn't supposed to be here. They were telling me, well, probably mid September, and I thought, right. I'll I'll just relax for October. Yeah, you know, and then all of a sudden it was like actually they came in, um, and we're gonna you know hold one for you because we have like 131 people that want this unit if you don't take it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> it was crazy. So I was like, okay, yeah, no, I definitely want it. Uh, yeah. So here it is. Yeah, it's congrats, it's man. gigantic. It Sounds amazing. Beautiful. I know a lot of people like the uh, blue the blue stripes, but uh, I've mm. really become fond of this look. So I, I like that look. It's I think it's a little easier on the eyes, actually, even though I like the blue pinstripe thing, too. But that's a little easier to kind of see what's going on, I think. And of mm -hmm. course, you still have the blue pinstripes on your OB6, so you right. kind of got yeah. it both covered. Yeah. Right. Right. And I think the That's Behringer right. one can have blue stripes too. So, oh yeah, right, because their version of it, yeah, for sure. Well, yeah, give us a little demo, man. Well, like here it is, just sitting on some patch. I was just noodling with, uh, kind of editing it for a little bit, but it's it's cool. <laughs> I mean, yeah, that's, that's just like one goof around and it's not even not even anything dialed in. It's just 
what I'm realizing is it's pretty amazingly musical right out of the box. Like it's already, you know how some sense you kind of have to work at them a little bit. Oh yeah. And this thing seems to be just making all the right, it's just whispering in my ear just right. Well, I think Oberheim could use that as their, uh, in their advertising, this box has many goof offs in here <laughs> and it whispers in your ear. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, I don't know. And you can, and of course, it's got the big stuff. Mm. Do that again. Yeah. It's nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice and fizzy in the whole bit. That's a synthesizer, man. Woo! That's it's amazing. wicked. Yeah, man. I, I I was like freaking out after I ordered it. I thought I should never have done this. Like it just felt, you know, like it's buyer's remorse is what it is. You know, like yeah. when, you, when you make a kind of a big purchase and you then you freak out and go, I should never yeah. have spent that kind of money. You know? <laughs> but now that it's here, it's like, okay, yeah, it's all right. I'll yeah. figure it out. <laughs> Well, I hate to uh, tell everybody no. after after a few of those notes, the show's all downhill from now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Which, I guess. Uh, well, was there any other toys anyone wants to talk about? Um, Tim, you were saying something about yeah. a module a as well, right? Yeah, yeah. Well, let me grab it. I, I was not thinking about this, but I also got. I've ordered another little Eurorack skiff because I want to make a live mm -hmm. rig only. That's dedicated so I don't have to move my studio rig here. So that's going to get kind of pricey, but they can be like really different things. Uh, yeah. And so, but yeah, let me, let me grab this module. Hang on a sec. What did I, I said it somewhere. Uh, oh yeah, here, hang on. So, uh, oh, took off the headphones. <laughs> His epidermis is showing again. So, uh, while, oh, let's see. Yeah, he's got it. This isn't actually the one. I know my epidermis was showing just then. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So Brian says that you need a Moog one to keep it company now. Oh man. Uh, yeah, except with the uh, price uh, hikes, I mean, man. Didn't they raise the price of oh, that? Oh yeah. Yeah. Is it, oh, oh really? It's yeah. even more now. Mm -hmm. It's like nine really? grand for the sixteen voice oh, now. Yeah. Ouch. Talk about a punch in the. You know. You know what. <sighs> I mean, be glad you guys already got yours, huh? Yeah. Well, I'm gonna sit here going, you know, they may, for for mine, it's the seventh one off the assembly line or whatever for production, and it was an extra five hundred dollars to get a sub ten serial number, so it was eighty five hundred oh. bucks, and now it's like, oh. then they raise it to eighty five hundred dollars for a regular one, and now they're nine grand basically. Yeah. It's like, holy cow. Well, uh. And Chris, do you have like a, you have a fairly early serial number uh, on yours, don't you? Yeah, it's, uh, I think, 81. So oh, it's wow. pretty, yeah, it's pretty, yeah. Uh, it's pretty close <laughs> to Brian's, I think, too, because I think his is, Brian, yours is in the 80s also. Yeah, I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't pay the extra money, but uh, I got it really quickly. So it was nice. Yeah. I was able to, oh yeah, he has 87. 87 for Brian. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Well, mine is yeah. uh, my uh, the X8 here is like 485, but I noticed some people getting theirs in today, and there are there are higher numbers than this one. So this yeah. has been I don't know. It's been hanging around for a minute. I don't know how that happens, but yeah, I got uh, so I bought. I can maybe show the my Euro rack a little more there just for the sake of it. I've been wanting to do a live thing. I have a potential gig at a museum and I have a gig that's uh, coming up that's at a hotel and it's going to be synth, synth guys in the round. Uh, so not, not too different from the Imam uh, culture that's been springing up that uh, Jamie Morton's a part of and Jim Glue. Yeah, kind of like an open mic thing for electronic musicians. 
Yeah, and so there's there's uh, there's going to be a spot to do that. I'm going to I'm going to be in the first one and be the guinea pig to get out there and see what That's happens. Cool. Wish they had yeah. those around. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm. We'll see how it goes. It's the first one they've done, and it's either, you know, I don't. I just don't know how that works in a hotel. If we're in the lobby, or if we're if they have a bar that we're in, I don't even know yet. And they'll stick you guys in the back corner somewhere to keep well, it down. A lot of times those so hotels big. will have uh, conference rooms for uh, mm -hmm. meetings, like yeah. the businesses that come in. So, might be in one of those. Yeah, I don't know if they would. If they're trying to do it like they would do uh, singer songwriters in the round, it would be basically just off of the lobby somewhere, mm -hmm. so that so that that is some sort of added benefit to oh their hotel right like it's cool like they have music, but if you mm -hmm. stuck us in a ballroom and closed the door that doesn't make sense. But I don't know. It's all if it's modular synthesizer. I mean, maybe that's what they'll want to do. Well. <laughs> <laughs> all the parts down i mean and... that's what i'm wondering you know it's just like i'm just hoping just, this... that's inappropriate <laughs> I, I, I have literally already made the conscious decision to make something pretty accessible happen for this first one so that maybe it helps with the overall impression yeah because you know, because if, if it were just super which would be fun but if it were just super noisy you know, then I don't know that they'd be like, well, the hotel guests don't really care for that. Because <laughs> it's a it's the Virgin Hotel here in Nashville. So and it's oh, funny because nice. it's, it's on Music Row. So it, that's even funnier to me. But welcome to Nashville 2022. I'll tell you that <laughs> this, this would never have happened before. But it's coming up and I wanted to make a live rig. So I just I ordered a few pieces of gear for that's more performance oriented than sort of what I have in this in my mm -hmm. kind of dedicated rack. And it won't be as this big. I'm not going to have that much stuff. I'm going to try to actually keep it really slim to where it's like two, two skiffs here, two rows, and then machine. And then I think I'll probably have to take key step pro so I can for the sequencing of it mostly. And just try to make that be it. Mm -hmm. So that's a, because when I when I went out live before, I basically took this half of the rig, and everyone was like, "Wow, that's a lot of kit." You know, that's like you brought out a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I was like, "I don't know." Well, Brian was there for got so many music, but I was like, "I don't know. Is that a lot?" Like this is kind of what I wanted to bring. This is like this is I worked my thing up with this. I don't know. Yeah. Um, I saw I saw a meme uh, earlier today that was kind of funny. It was like this kind of old photo, but it's a uh, it was a guitar player, and there was like probably eighty pedals on boards and stuff sitting in front of them. And it was like a, a, every every musician on a Wednesday night lounge gig or something, bar gig or whatever. <laughs> but that kind of that kind of. Like, kind of mindset like oh i just i wanted to bring all this stuff i want to use it yeah yeah and, and you know you got to remember i'm a drummer so i bring a ton of pieces of you know it's not like i an amp and a guitar yeah you know nothing personal but like i bring cases of crap you know and so <laughs> for for me to do that with the synth was just like i didn't even think twice about it and everyone else was going whoa you really like brought a lot of stuff and i'm like that doesn't yeah. feel like it to me <laughs> <laughs> just the drummer in me but yeah so that, that's yeah. that's coming up and it, it, so i got a I've, I've been kind of slowly getting in a couple of euro rack modules and i'm ex mm -hmm. pretty excited about them um and they're real different there's i found one it's called tone star um i don't have the link handy but and it's uh it's like a hybrid of a 2600 module with uh roland filters yeah. So it's kind of this own, but man, it sounds fantastic. And it has an ADSR section. It's got the filters in it, you know, so it's already kind of a complete yeah. ready to make some noise. Yeah. I've seen those. Those look really cool. God, it sounds really good to my ear. So I, I do like mixing, you know, some of the brands and in, in uh, filters and oscillators and stuff. I yeah. do that a lot with my, 
with my matriarch and my Euro rack. And so like running the yeah. matriarch into a polyvox filter is just killer. Really like doing that. And also, you know, doing stuff with the, like the rolling style filters as well. Yeah. That's it here, Tim. Yeah. Yep. That's it. Yeah. So it's so yeah, studio electronics. I mean, their website is like super slow to load here. But yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. So you're getting yeah, that, one of the, that's the looking? one. Mm -hmm. That's the one. And so, yeah, it's, it's got quite a bit of functionality right on the face plate. And then of course, CV for it all. Um, yeah, it's the one that's here, the 20, the 2600 inspired one. That's actually the one. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Know, yeah. Anyway, it sounds great. And I didn't really have, I needed some kind of dedicated oscillator for the new skiff. But then one of the things I got because just for performance elements is this thing made by IntelliGel and it's called Planar 2. And oh, it's basically, joystick, yeah. yeah, so, you know, it's a joystick uh, with X and Y axis and then um, the kind of in between A, B and C. Nice. And, yeah. And so you can access this a number of different ways and then have it control. Uh, I think it's like eight different parameters at once. There's two V, two CV outputs here. Yeah. With um, attenuverters. Mm -hmm. So yeah, basically like I'm, I'm trying to imagine <clears throat> hooking up modulation parameters to like three different sound sources. And then while I'm playing something, be able to slowly modulate all of those, you know, at once, you know, just to create dynamics in the track and whatnot. So yeah. I'm excited about this thing. It's kind of, you know, by itself, I don't think it's going to be all that. But like, depending on how I can hook this up, I think it's going to add some real cool performative elements. And, you know, half the reason is that it looks so damn cool and people wonder what you're doing. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, and, and that's the funny thing uh, about, you know, synth performance or especially with modular because you have all these tiny little knobs, right? So yeah. when you go in there, and these things could be making a dramatic change in the sonics, but like you're just, <laughs> you're just moving this tiny little knob. So it's not like doing windmills, you know, with a guitar. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's what you I was know? totally thinking about. Like guitarists and drummers have all the moves, you know, like yeah. throwing yeah. the sticks and stuff and yes. the, the windmills and Yes. Playing and it then, behind your head, and you got to have something like that for some some modular synth jam. Yeah, and then you have just some guy doing this. You know, and you can't really tell what's happening, but dramatic things are happening sonically. So, yeah, I don't know. Like I've, I think it would be cool, quite frankly, to to do some sort of little overhead camera situation with a projector or something. I mean, eventually that would be like a, a place to aim for. I think. Because I just think if people could see better what, what it is yeah. you're doing, because it's so small, you know, and if you could kind of just zoom in on it, I think that I'm sure somebody's already doing that, of course, but like, I think that would be fun. I'd like to, to do that. So okay, anyway, that's the yeah. modular keytar. There you go. Yeah, it gets out of control pretty fast, doesn't it? But just to, <laughs> a bunch of cables you know. hanging off everywhere. <laughs> modular keytar is amazing. <laughs> They go rolling, make it happen. That that could be dangerous, you know, with the wires you get caught up in them. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes, that could not be good. What's that? What's that? Didn't they, those guys in that Revenge of the Nerds movie at the end, weren't they like, they had like these things that they, and it was like modular synths in front of them and they were doing maybe something like that. But then you look like a hot dog guy at the baseball game walking around. <laughs> <laughs> wow so that's you my know. other yeah that's my other little modular thing i wanted to talk about there were there are a couple of other new modules that are out i pre-ordered one if i can talk for a second more i'm, I'm hogging the yeah. show also i don't mean to be the it's a xpo is a it's a stereo uh dual oscillator module from make noise music it's not available yet but i pre-ordered it because it looks really cool it has yeah. it has stereo uh pulse width uh -huh. 
that's cool <laughs> so really cool yeah it, it's it's capable of doing some really cool stuff what's um, it called xpo by make noise yeah some of the some of the sounds they got going from from that thing just sound amazing yeah i think so that's going to be one of the other i'll have that tone star and then xpo as sound sources and then just a bunch of modulation and uh yeah that's it, is. it uh maybe i'll zoom this up a little bit because their website's really tiny it is yeah so it's got like actual stereo pulse width mod which is really very cool nice not only can you split up the whatever the oscillators but yeah but that and then they they have a companion um, filter that's also stereo, so you can kind of process things separately from left and right, a la the matriarch or something of that nature. So that's mm -hmm. yeah, that's going to be a nice one real single solid. It's a mono voice, but with a, a stereo spread. Should be cool. Yeah. We'll see. I mean, in someone else's hands, it'd be great. <laughs> <laughs> So I'm sure you'll do awesome things, especially yeah, uh, combine that yeah. with some uh, OBX8 there. You're going to be famous, man. <laughs> <laughs> Better get your autograph now. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. So I, I ended up getting something, too, this week. So um, I know a, uh, it's kind of been a friend of a friend. Like, I've, I've you know, hung out with him from time to time here and there, but there's a, a local surf guitarist who's a, just a really cool dude and uh, uh, play, plays all over and uh, not real big on tech stuff. So uh, I did some work for him and, and fixed up his uh, vintage uh, Fender Deluxe Reverb, and which is a really cool amp and did some stuff. And then like a couple of days later, he calls me. He's like, hey, uh, I've got this. I've got this old uh, Silvertone amp. I'm not sure what to do with it, and it needs some work. Do you want it? So yeah. Well, how much do you want for it? He's like, Oh no, I'll give it to you. And so he came by mm. the house and brought this thing to me. Let me grab it here. Mm. Mm. Bam! Whoa! Wow! So I haven't opened it up yet. This is probably from, I don't know, about 63 or 64. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I'll show you the back. Yeah. There's, all the, oh, yeah. There's all the good stuff. That's God. cool. Looking. So this is kind of an, an interesting an interesting amp. It was, uh, it was made for Sears, you know, Sears Roebuck. <laughs> and under the Silvertone name by Dan Electro, and uh, it's, I don't know, roughly a 80 to 100 watt amp, uh, two channels, tremolo and reverb, although the reverb is absolutely dreadful, but the tremolo is great. And so it was kind of, it was kind of a budget amplifier and it's got really kind of a, a really odd design. I'm going to, I'm going to pull up a screen here for a second. Um, and I, okay, so this is probably not meaning a whole lot here, but you've got four power tubes, which is normal for an amp of that wattage and the crazy thing is it's got two output transformers and it would be it would power um three eight of them speakers in parallel and then a whole nother set but they're all in the same cabinet it's a really odd weird design and so um you know i gotta do some of the normal maintenance the electrolytics um will need to be changed it's got the old two prong and you know i don't want to die so the old two prong power cable needs to go and needs to get properly grounded and some other stuff and so these these amps were like really kind of budget amps and not very highly thought of but uh when some of the like kind of indie and garage band type bands were making it bigger this is kind of the stuff that they use and so once um what's his face uh jack white of the uh What's their band? White Stripes? White Stripes, yeah. yeah. Uh, Raconteurs. So, yeah, so he, he kind of made them, he popularized them, I guess, so that now they're a little more sought after. So, yeah, it'll be a cool little project to just 
finding the time, the, the energy to do it. I still have the 2600 to do, so we'll, we'll wait on it a little bit, but once I get around to it, it should be a real fun amp, and they're kind of dirty and um, lo-fi sounding. You know, the, the, the output transformers are really small, so it's nothing big sounding like a Marshall or old Fender or something, so should be a very fun amp, but I'm looking forward to working on it. So I sound huge. What's yeah. that? I sound huge. Marshall. It's, like a, a Marshall. it's, it's a Marshall thing. Uh, it's a Marshall exactly. reference. <laughs> <laughs> wah, wah, crickets. <laughs> hey. right, this is why I'm not a comedian. Folks. <laughs> Timing. <laughs> Wait, timing. Uh, now your epidermis is showing <laughs> <laughs> all over the place. All over the place. <laughs> I can't believe those uh, those Silvertone heads are eighty watts or so. What? Yeah. So, really? like, it's, that's powerful, it's, man. Yeah. That's yeah. Like, I mean, most of the like, you know, big like a Fender Twin that's would be about eighty five watts, or or you know, your regular Marshall Super Lead that, that a lot of the sixties and seventies players use would be a hundred watts. And they made this amp um, in a more, uh, I think, another configuration. Like Brian is talking about in the chat that uh, uh, let's see, guitar player in his band had one with a two twelve cab, which was the model that's identical to this, but it had half the power amp. Uh, of this one so uh, that one one would have been about 40 watts and I think actually what I'm going to do with this because some of the some of the fun of this amp is not to play it loud and clean is to play mm. it you know moderate levels but have it overdrive more and so uh, the cool thing is you can pull a couple of the power tubes and um, I'm going to rewire the the output because again it doesn't have uh, a quarter inch jack out like most guitar amps it has this wire that comes out of it so i got to reroute that stuff internally <laughs> put a jack on it but then what i'll do is i'll just run half the power amp so it'll you know take it down to a 40 watt and then i'll be able to turn it up louder and get it to distort to distort easier yeah get the break up yeah because i mean this is quicker. not going to be like a really super good clean app. I've got other things that will do that, but it'll be a cool, like grungy, you know, dirty it up sound. Yes. Yeah, it's gonna be perfect for that. That's really cool. When'd you get that? Uh, a couple days ago. Yeah. Oh, nice. So I guess I haven't played it, and I there's things I got to do to it before I really played it. He he said he plugged it in the other day, and um, it was all working except for the reverb. Um, but again, there's just certain things like, uh, I need to, I need to take care of first. It, that'll, it's yeah. always a bummer. Like you can get some cool old stuff and, uh, but you know, you gotta, you gotta put some, put some of that work in to make sure it's going to be okay. Cause I want to be able to have it for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. You should, uh, once you get it in, you should like run the profit through it or something on a lead sound just for the hell of it. <laughs> yeah. Like Gan hammer. Be great, yeah. Amp it, man. Amp it up. That'd be cool. You know, I, I was uh, so I was reading that. You know, it's kind of funny, like how uh, mindsets change about things. And so, uh, when Pink Floyd would record, they're always running their uh, synthesizers into amplifiers when they play live. It was like we would think, like, oh, we just show it up and we'd run it direct into something, or have like a monitor keyboard amp. But they're actually using like you know, old high watts and stuff like guitar amplifiers to amplify their mini Moogs and, and whatnot. Mm. So yeah, it's kind of a, kind of a different mindset, but some of those classic tones are not just, you know, uh, you know, a mini Moog or VCS three or whatever. It's, they're actually being run into amplifiers. And of course I think, um, Jan Hammer did that a lot in, at least in the seventies, like when he was playing with the Jeff Beck group and stuff, his mini Moog, we'd be going into a guitar amp if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah it, mic up the amps and then yeah, you want to get talking playing yeah yeah cool. So I mean, th th one thing about doing that though is you're going to really limit the uh, the range of it because you know it's going to be somewhat band passed for guitar, so you're not going to get the super lows yeah. and the super highs out of it. You're like you get up to whatever maybe seven eight k or something, and you'll have no more after that. Yeah, just need a splitter. 
a, you know, a clean channel and then the distorted channel. <laughs> just take just take two tracks, right? One clean yeah, and one yeah. through the amp. Yeah, that works. <laughs> That's cool. What have you been up cool. to, Marshall? Not much. Just been working on my uh, live stuff still. But um, uh, since we were going to do this show about some track dissection, I decided to go ahead and finish up an old track that I had been sitting around. It was, oh, nice. um, where's my little guy? <clears throat> He's actually using uh, mostly this. So we're talking about these uh, fancy, expensive synths like the uh, OBX8. But I made this track mostly with uh, an Uno synth. I love it. That's yeah, so I, cool. I, I mean, I, I've never played an Uno synth, but I, I love the fact fact that you're you're doing it like I, I think that's where people get tripped up like i've got to have really great gear to do this yeah and yeah. you show up and you do it with something like that i mean there was a, a track that i made that had like a, a cs80 style lead and um they're like oh did you did you do it with the moog one I'm like well yeah that does it really that has that sound that's really great i did it with a plug-in though they're like right. what? <laughs> <laughs> it's like yeah, you don't need to, and and that would be an excellent example. Well, at the end of the day, you know, most people, especially people that just enjoy music in general, they're not necessarily interested in how the sausage is made. They just want the final product. So, if it sounds good, it sounds good. You know, mm -hmm. that's right. Well, I, I think it's you know, in those situations, yeah, most of the audience. 99% is not going to care, but to me, it's the artist. If the artist cares, because then it affects what you create with that. Sure. So if you find a good tone in a plug-in or a cheap synth or something, man, that's all the better. The cool thing is with the plug-ins is they can do some bread and butter that's very similar to hardware, if not exact, you know. Mm -hmm. But they can, they can do things... A lot, well, at least for me, anyways, just because the way the interfaces are, it's a little easier for me to engage with the plugin to get really deep into something as opposed to some menu diving in a hardware synth. So you can actually, at least for me, in my experience, like in the plugins, really push it into some weird areas pretty easily just, just by nature of the UI, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And then automating it too. So then it's there and it's, it's uh, repeatable, whereas with the analog gear and you're grabbing knobs and trying to get that to repeat. Good luck, you know. Yeah, if it's yeah. fully analog, yeah, for sure. Like the ARP twenty six hundred, like yeah, that thing. I get a good patch, and I'm like, I don't want to touch it now. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'll never probably get this same tone back again. Yeah. And no, so, no yeah. matter what you do, like photographs and whatnot, it it's still it's tough. Yeah. <laughs> yep, because it's all about. Where the knob, that knob that's got to be exactly in the right s spot, you know. But yeah, so should we uh, should we do some track dissection then? Yeah, let's do it. So uh, Tim, why don't you uh, you want to start us off? I, I sure can. I have. Um, what do what do we think is better? Should I just should I play that YouTube video of it, or should I just go right to Pro Tools and play it that way? Let's do uh, Pro Tools. Okay. Okay. Well, yeah. well, also, we should say why we're doing this. Like, we're, so t let's kind of maybe explain a little bit what we're doing and why we're doing it. Why are we showing tracks today? Well, let, that makes sense. Well, because we make them. Yes. <laughs> wait, wait. Since show hosts are making music? <laughs> it, it happens. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, well, it's and speaking of guys, synth show hosts that actually make music, Ranzi's in the chat. Hey, Ranz. Yeah, Ranzi, what's up, Nice, man? cool. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I actually bought Ranzi's uh, album. Oh, nice. Yeah. So, yeah, good to see you, Ranzi. So, yeah, uh, yeah, we just wanted to kind of showcase some of the stuff that we've been working on lately and kind of maybe go through a little bit of the process and just kind of show how we came up with what we came up with. Yeah, Chris, I mean, that's it, right? You're, you're mm -hmm. right that we should describe that, but it is basically how we came up with what we came up with and, and then be able to actually show like the session, <clears throat> excuse me, from it and whatnot. So we can kind of just have some discussion about it between us and in the chat. And um, so, yeah, that was the thrust behind it. 
which is cool. Yeah, I, like uh, to, to dissect it like that. <clears throat> yeah, I always find it so fascinating to see how everybody does everything. So, like, I mean, Ramsey's workflow you know, how he goes about it. And he talks about how he sets up his modules. Like we, you know, having David on the other week and how he makes his music. It's like, it, it's always, it's always so different, everybody and how they do it. And so there's always something to be gleaned and learned from that. Yeah. And it, it works best as, as well when you're trying to explain certain things, especially in the way, you know, we work as individuals with a, an actual project that we can kind of pick through. Mm hmm so yeah, with some examples. Yes. Well, let me. Uh, I'll I'll share this. I'll share this one here. <clears throat> so, Synthetics asking, what's your uh, motivation and inspiration for this uh, track? That's a, that's a good question. That is a good question. It, it's a it's a synth jam that I had put out on my YouTube channel, and I know that as I was creating those back to back, I would definitely be reactive to the last one I did in some way and want to not kind of do the same thing, even though that would be the temptation. I was trying to use that as a hopping off point to say, I want to change the tempo. I want to change the mood and I want to kind of change the voices I'm using and um, give it a really different attitude. So my motivation of this particular one was definitely just reactive to the one that, that preceded it. I just wanted to do something a little bit different. And uh, I can tend to get a little on the mellow side with things sometimes, but, um, and this one's not aggressive, I wouldn't say by any means, but has a, like a higher BPM than sometimes what I'll do. Mm -hmm. um, so that would be, that would be kind of where that started. But let's see, can we, uh, oh yeah, right there. Cool. I got you. I got you, Tim. You do. You do. Thank you. Uh, yeah. So I guess I'll just uh, take this one thing off of input because we don't need that. Uh, I'll just play the track, I guess. Is this the best way to go about it? How about we play the track and then just play the track and then, yeah, give us some breakdown. Break it down. Yeah. Cool. All right. Cool. Thank you. 
that's yeah bravo man that's excellent Thanks. you got a lot of really interesting sounds in there too it's pretty trippy um, <laughs> just before you get into it um i've posted the link in the chat uh of the song and uh one thing i didn't think of like because we've had several comments that the quality has not been great coming over with the music and i wonder if that maybe has to do with the um what's it called the stream yard uh what's it called here automatically adjust mic volume i wonder if it's like doing some funny compression oh. stuff uh, yeah, we should probably... mine, so hopefully it sounds okay yeah you turned that off right marshall yeah on yours yep. I, so maybe maybe that is part of the deal yeah obviously can't tell what it sounds like on the other end all right okay, so i've Cool. Well, thank you. Uh, yeah, thanks says, for posting it. Hmm, it says also it's mono. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, there's, a whole, there's a whole music mode in StreamYard, but it, it disables the echo cancellation. And I, I uh, we had tested that once, and it was causing a bunch of weird stuff. So. Oh, well, at least there wasn't a whole lot of stereo things going on in that for anyone to miss. 
Okay, well, that's uh, that's a live and learn for me. Sorry, guys. Yeah, well, well this is, you know, we're, we're figuring it out here, so. Yeah, we're <laughs> and working plus on it. Gives, it gives people opportunity. If they like the sound of that, it sounds a lot better, you know, playing it directly from YouTube in stereo without all the compression stuff that StreamYard does. So yeah. if you can, like, check it out after the show and then also, you know, make sure you subscribe to Chim's channel and like the video and all that. Oh, yeah, yes, Tim, Tim, give us a give us a breakdown here. What you got going on? I'm interested because it sounded like <clears throat> you were doing some interesting things. I don't know if it was with some delay effects or something that was causing the the sounds to kind of warp, or how were you kind of doing accomplishing that? Yeah, uh, exactly. But that's exactly right. It's with uh, uh, Strymon Magneto. Okay, uh, and I was running a Euro a euro rack um module through it in fact i was running uh, uh zero <clears throat> zero coast no coast through it uh and also hydra so hydra synth has some cv abilities and it's it's cool magneto has like some tape effects with uh transports for stop and fast forward and play and so i was playing with those that's what kind of makes it sound like it's the like a vinyl wind down and that kind of thing yeah, I dig that, man. That sounds great. That was really fun to just kind of let it eat, you know, and then I'm modulating it with maths and um, mm -hmm. uh, No Coast has a math section, too. So, you know, you're just kind of getting what, what you're getting as it happens, <laughs> <laughs> which is fun, right? Like a little bit of randomness in there. It's not that, yeah. calcu not that calculated. But it's and then, musical uh, as well. Like it didn't sound, you know, so, some randomness can not sound good, but that sounded right. great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, finding that balance. So yeah, thanks, man. And uh, and then there's kind of some backwards sounding stuff as well. That's Morphogene with some samples from the actual track that I, I played into Morphogene and then reversed and uh, brought them in and out. But but yeah, all of that was done in a single pass live. Um, that's not an overdub scene. So you know, you can kind of tell that in a way when certain things get a little repetitive, but I'm only grabbing for the elements, you know, and mm -hmm. as I could, as, as it seems to go along. Uh, so let's see, let's, let's talk about what else is there. Uh, the Moog subsequent 37 is the bass sound. Yeah. Could and... you solo a little bit? Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Of the different instruments. I'm yeah. Let's, let's how this do that. That's, that's, that's a great yeah. idea. That's a good idea. Okay. Yeah. So, Yeah, so all of that stuff that happens pretty much throughout the track, that's Hydrosynth uh, with some um, modulation going on there from Maths. Let me kind of ooch ahead here. Okay, yeah, and then that's, that's definitely Magneto using the tape effects on it. And the drums are coming all from Machine. I still love using samples. I suppose one day maybe I'll graduate to using more of like synth drums, but I just love samples still. <laughs> how how oh. are you doing that? Uh, are you inputting it on the pads or um, creating patterns in your DAW or what? Yeah, I'm creating the patterns uh, in Machine, but Machine is a plug-in in the DAW mm -hmm. in, in Pro Tools. So, yeah, and then I'm able just to bring scenes in and out with a push of the button on the front panel. And it has a cool note repeat feature, which I tend to use a lot for little quick little fills because I can just reach over with one hand and get a bass drum to roll for a second, you know, and then move on to back to other things. So that's really a fun thing I like to do. I would like to um, develop some more techniques like that, but but that one's pretty effective just to kind of reach over if you just need like a little fill in where you are, because I'm not doing the whole form obviously is not like all thought out. It's just in sections and then I'm just bringing sections in as I feel. So mm -hmm. if I were to do drum fills in there, it would be prescribing, oh, here comes the next section every time. And I don't want to do that. I want to yeah. keep it open. Let's see what else then. Let's move on here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, let's get to some bass. Oh, oh. Okay, yeah, I want to mention this. This is um, this is from Jamie Morden's or Geosense Evolutions sounds for the OB6. So that big kind of walk around chordal movement, that's definitely sounds from him. And I just love this one. And then I think I've put some, uh, what I put on it. It sounds like it's uh, Valhalla. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's got the shimmer verb on it. I mean, you can kind of tell that, but I don't care. It sounds fantastic to me. So yeah, let's just hear that. I'll solo that because that's a big, big sound. Love that sound. <laughs> great patch, right? Yeah. Yeah, oh, yeah. Um, okay, and then kind of moving forward, let's see what else is of interest. <laughs> I love that, man. What is that? That's... Uh, that is, let's see, what am I using for that? Oh, yeah, that's your rack. So that's uh, going to be the no coast through Magneto oh. using those tape uh, transport controls. Yeah, that sounds excellent. That's really fun. It's really unique sounding, too. Yeah, it's kind of like a little bit something, you, you know what's up, but then it's like, huh, it doesn't quite do what you expect, I think. Yeah. Uh, all right, and then let's see. I think there's some. Oh yeah, so then there's a, a defam element that comes in. Here we go. Yeah, not too much to say about that. I mean, obviously, it's just through some rhythmic delay. But that's, it's a cool little uh, element, I think. Okay. Getting to be mostly what's there. Once there's a big halftime feel change that happens, then I start putting some side chain on the bass, which is sort of fun. Nothing, nothing uh, groundbreaking. But I think it's all right. Let's see. Let's hear it. Where's the kick? Ah. I like that. Yeah, the kick, doo, doo. and then the the way that the snare kind of like shh, off into the distance there. Yeah, that that little effect that's uh, trailing off is is kind of giving it a little more depth and some rhythm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, too, right. So I guess that's mostly it. There's a there's kind of like a random little uh, mother thirty two part in there. So I mean, I tend to like have little sections set up and then I'm just kind of grabbing things. It's one of the reasons I guess I have the number of synths that I do is just because I can kind of like get every, you know, each one kind of thinking about it, it's going to play a part and then mm -hmm. I can bring it in, you know, for live, then I can just bring it in and in and out as, as uh, I'm inspired to. So then when you, when you, uh, when you start working on something like this, um, how much of it is MIDI and how much of it is you like live? Okay. That's a good question. Uh, well, I'd say about a, a third of it is probably, you know, MIDI or sequences that are sitting there waiting. And then, mm -hmm. you, then, but then I'm launching them, 
you know, as at will rather than it being a set number of measures. And then like that OB6 part um, that I mentioned that we heard is I'm playing that on the keyboard uh, so as, we, it, as it goes by. So, yeah. So you're kind of multi-tracking this and just recording the performance in real time. Is that what I'm understanding? That's exactly what that is. Yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. So you don't, do you do a lot of like, once you get it kind of laid down, go back and redo certain things or you just kind of like, this is it. And none of it. I, none, I don't go back and redo it because I'm trying to, you know, be, be true to, to it being a live performance. I will, if it takes me, you know, four times to get the performance I like, I will do that. Right. You, you just know, start over from scratch. Just, though, right? just start over. Yeah. yeah. But I won't. It, once it's done and I feel like that's it, I just I just leave it, you know, blemishes and all. Um, that's cool. Uh, I, I like that. So, it, yeah, it gives a different, well, it's more performative sounding. I think it feels live that way. But. So, yeah, that one's called uh, Four Reasons Unknown. And it's, yeah, thanks, uh, Chris, for sharing that. But, yeah, that's that's kind of my little bit right there. Let's uh, let's move on. All right, Marshall. Okay. Let's move on to Marshall. Yeah, so let's talk about my little uh, setup here. I'll switch over, and I'll make myself uh, big here. So, um, yeah, this was a track from 2018, everyone. Um, but I went ahead and finished it yesterday for this uh, show, and this is uh, primarily using the uno synth from ik multimedia um so i'll play this and then i can kind of break it down it looks like there's not a lot going on but i'll i'll show you a little more once uh once it goes through so i'll just play this from the top Thank you. 
you can never get that five minutes of your life back, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. That is killing, dude. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yeah, so, again, this is uh, pretty interesting because uh, I don't do a lot of single synth type uh, jams usually or whatever, but um, when I got the, the uh, I almost said Hydra synth, when I got the Uno synth, uh, I was pretty impressed with how it sounded, actually. And uh, so I decided to kind of see what I could do with it. And this is kind of what I'd come up with. So obviously the percussion and stuff is um, I'm using for the bass drum. I'm using kick two. This is like the best kick plugin ever because you can kind of make your own stuff. Uh, I kind of took a preset and then I, I tuned it to the key, which is F. So um, and then in the percussion section, um, I like this is part of the reason why I love Ableton so much because you can use these little drum racks and you can put your samples in here and then you know uh, you got your samples and then you just write the patterns in MIDI and you're good right so anyway and then with the bass uh, what I did is I've got the main bass is from the Uno synth here and I can kind of solo this. And one of the cool things I'm doing here, at least in my opinion, is I'm taking that art acoustic reverb, which uh, we talked about in the last show. Um, you can actually, you know, shave off uh, with the EQ, like how you want the reverb to affect the sound. So when the filter is kind of closed, there's not as much high-end content, mm -hmm. and so you don't get as much reverb. And then as I open the filter, sweep the filter open, it also opens up the reverb and kind of fills up more space, which is cool. Yeah, that's nice. And R real cool. The idea from this, I, I was listening to some older uh, Dead Mouse stuff, and he did something kind of similar. So uh, some of this was like inspired by some dead mouse tunes. Um, so yeah, but then I also have, because the, the, the actual low end on that isn't the, the cleanest thing. So I'm using operator for sub bass. So when we combine both of those, I don't know how this is going to sound. Um, but that's just the, sub bass and then you combine them and that kind of fills out the full spectrum there for the bass um then i have the second kind of bass part i called it bass two very creative of me <laughs> and <laughs> this one's kind of like a mid bass it kind of comes in So that's that sound. And then like the last that. little bit. Uh, yeah. And then the last little bit from the Uno. These are all sounds from the Uno synth. Uh, is the kind of high end melody. I think it's down here. Uh, oops. What did I And with that, I'm just using a little bit of chorus and some uh, ping pong delay. I'm a big fan of the ping pong delay. And then there's this um, Nicky Romero side chaining plugin sometimes, but um, this is like an older project. Nowadays, I'd use LFO tool, um, but same kind of thing. Oh, yeah. And it, it makes it to where because if you, you guys probably know, like when you're side chaining the old school way, you take a compressor and then you input, you know, your your kick or whatever, whatever sound you wanted to, to activate the compressor on. Um, the problem when you do that in something like Ableton is when you want to bounce out the audio. Um, since I, I program a lot of stuff in MIDI first and then I'll, I'll render audio after the fact. When you do that, you have to break the side chain. So these plugins like this Nicky Romero Kickstart plugin and LFO tool allow you to leave the side chaining on if you want. Uh, without having to redo a bunch of stuff. So it's just kind of convenient. Um, 
And then, yeah, Omnisphere. I'm using an Omnisphere patch. This is kind of the uh, more atmospheric element that's in here. It's uh, it's actually three three of the same patch. It's the um, Hanging Metals Boom patch in here, and this kind of reminds me of like an old factory or like a you know like a train station kind of sound. Mm -hmm. I thought it was pretty cool, and it kind of just gives a little bit of random texture to the to the track. Ah, uh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, man, that's that's wicked cool. Yeah. And that's one of the nice things about Omnisphere is it's really, really deep. And the even just the presets, they got so many great presets in here. And this is just a preset. And I've got three sets of it, uh, two kind of pan left and right, and one in the center. Um, and then noise. Actually, this is from, this noise is from the Uno synth as well. I forgot about this. Yeah, this is just some noise with uh, f uh, waves uh, flanger and then some side chaining as well. But it sounds excellent, I think. Um, Got to find where it's playing. There we go. Sounds like a rocket ship. Like SpaceX. I, I love that. I love what that does in the track. Mm -hmm. That's really cool. Yeah, and so you take these elements, combine them and with the percussion, and if I just do kind of a, a solo of... I don't know if I've got that muted or not. There we go. <laughs> So yeah, that's it, uh, man. And all that, uh, those elements that are like the rhythmic elements in the drums that are, like you're not super obviously, but that stuff that's going boom, 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 boom. like that stuff is like what makes it cook beyond it just being straight up and down, four in the floor, and like you know a snare backbeat. Like those little details you've added really bring that groove to life, man. That's nice. Yeah, thanks. It's it's. It, and this track isn't super dynamic melodically, right? It's pretty much the same kind of riff over and over again, but being able to extract elements, bring them in and out, do things with the filter sweeps and little crescendos and things like that. Like you can get, you can get some interesting full tracks just doing very simple things like that. I think. Yeah. And one of the most prominent elements to me was the way that um, as, as you're, about to introduce another section as it's coming in you're playing with the dynamics those tonal elements and like you know i think some of it was the omnisphere how you would uh -huh. bring things in it was constantly changing and evolving but it was always something interesting to catch the ear to lead you into the next section uh, i really yeah, like kind of little builds little mini builds yeah. and then uh you get kind of a bigger build mm -hmm. and then when you're opening and then this remember i told you guys like when i when i write tracks i tend to write the meat and potatoes so the part where everything's going kind of full all the filters are open all the way all that stuff that's kind of where i started with this and then just kind of moving stuff around from there that's a great way to do it because yeah, yeah you know where you're gonna land you know exactly it's, yeah it, it can be kind of hard the other way around you're like yeah but where do i go with it now but if you start with the end in mind and then go backwards right yep mm. yep so I think Dude, it that, turned out pretty good. Uh, yeah, yeah I should killer. probably, I should probably release this. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, um, it's killer. Right. And, and and I want to say like, not only is it cool from just like mostly leaning on Uno for it, but I I really think it's cool from the aspect of it never gets too busy. There's never too many sounds. It's very yeah. like like kind of controlled in that way. Not mm -hmm. that it feels that way, but like it's very like. It, it does exactly what it needs to do. You know what I mean? Like it's just yeah. doing right what it needs to do. And I'm very impressed by that. It's mm. really cool. Man. So you figure there's only five real sounds in that other than percussion, right? The percussion mm. is a little, is more obviously, but if you t exclude the percussion, five sounds made that. 
weren't we talking about that five was the ultimate amount to have at one time? I think we have. Uh, yeah. I think we I were having know. that conversation. Yeah. I think we did. I think we were saying five elements in general is sort of a way of thinking. No more than five at any given moment. I can't remember yeah. who, who talked about that. It was like a Rick Rubin thing or something, or who was it? Uh, it was, I, I think, was, yeah, I don't remember. I thought it was another synth artist, but yeah. No. Yeah. Yeah, it's an interesting idea and philosophy to have, like to kind of narrow down things. Like I've, I've always kind of come at it the other direction, like, thinking about uh yeah well like particularly the beatles have all these like random thing in the later era of their stuff like 66 and on like all these random things come in and i'm always thinking like what's the random thing but sometimes you need to to do the opposite and kind of scale back and go what are the what is the solid core yeah i i i struggle though like where tim where you succeed i think is in really exploring some really cool sounds and effects on those sounds to make them sound really unique and i sometimes struggle with that bit personally weird. well it sure doesn't sound like it <laughs> <laughs> like it's well, always can, solid it's like solid a as a rock to- you know well, thank you. But I mean, I, I listen to your stuff and I hear little bits of ear candy and I'm like, man, that's cool. Like, yeah. I wonder how, like, he comes up with this stuff. Cause like almost all the stuff you, you make that I've listened to, man, you've always got like really cool elements that are really unique, but fit. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. That's, that's definitely the goal there is to try to, I mean, that's part of the fun to me of having these machines is like, geez, like this, the limitations are kind of your imagination more than anything else. I mean, yeah. obviously, obviously there are limitations, but yeah, no, thank you. That's yeah. That's definitely one of my uh, goal. Like that's how I hear music. I hear that stuff. I just hear it that way. Yeah. And yeah. the fact that you sit and you just do it all live is cool too. <laughs> Cause I sequence a lot of stuff. I don't, you know, at least for that stuff I'm working on live yeah. now, you know, and it's a whole yeah. different ball, game, you know, right. A completely right. different way of thinking. Uh, yeah. Yeah, man. I mean, that's, uh, the life thing It is a different way of thinking and you're going to, you're going to kill that just like you do with the track, you know, I mean, it's just going to be a different way of getting to it, but yeah, it'll, it'll still have that same impact because it's you driving the bus, man. It's still going to have that, that, that bit going on. It's still going to be there, which is going to be killer. What was your motivation or inspiration for that track using a, an earlier question so at the at the time when i was working on this i was listening to a lot of dead mouse like old school dead mouse and so that's kind of where the kind of eighth note uh, baseline and all that stuff kind of came from and the idea of opening up that filter with um the eq'd mm. reverb to give it just make it sound big uh i thought i just kind of started playing around with it and i was like this is it actually sounds pretty good. So that's kind of how it started. It started with that main kind of bass sound and, and tweaking that filter with the uh, um, reverb. It's killer. And just the way that it sort of hits on being power chords too is like nice. Yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. I get that kind of sense as well. Almost like even though there's no chords at all in that. Yeah, but I just it. mean the the fits you know I mean? and the bass. It's almost like a guitarish kind of vibe. Yeah. Uh, and then the way you're opening up the filter and then doing the verb, and you, you know, that, that whole bit that you've added, which is really a great element, but, but and yeah, that's a cool thing. Has- when you, when you program a sound to where, you know, when the filter is closed, it's short notes, you know, or you can play the short notes, but as you open up the filter, it also extends the, uh, the decay and the release yeah. to make it sound like a single note. I love doing stuff like that. I do that in a yeah. lot of stuff actually. Yeah, that's cool. Hmm. really yeah. effective well chris all right you feel like so, doing it what you we've got chris kept, we've kept you up late man <laughs> so i uh, we get to discover together what i did because uh so i wasn't planning to do something today because just been a little bit out of it but um i pulled up a track i did late last year and uh here let me Let's see here. Add to stream. There we go. 
and let me make sure the stuff is on okay so we just figured out oh i just figured out how to get this to even play just before the show so um what i did here um i'm not going to play this whole thing because it's like something like seven minutes or six minutes or something um but the goal behind this track here or this it's actually four songs and uh at the time i was doing um presets for the um Pulsar Modular P42 Climax. Uh, and it's this, uh, you can see the transformer in the center and it was it was kind of the origins of this effect was the Motown's um, Wolf Box transformer, line transformer, and then all sorts of other great things have been added to this saturation, some, some filters and whatnot. And so um, I, I created a lot of the presets for it and uh, there's so many different things on here that um nice that you can do and so the goal of the song was um demonstrate some of the applications for this and i had a big long video where i where i broke it down and so um with this i you know just trying to again this is all these four tracks are not tracks of music that like oh this is a type of music i make but it was stuff that i wanted to explore and so what I will do is I'll, I will play just a little bit of the first three uh, tracks, just so we're not, you know, it's just not going to be long. I'll just play little clips from it. I'll let the last one play. And so what we have here, just briefly before I play it, there's um, kind of a 60s British uh, pop rock kind of thing, um, you know, kind of Beatlesque, uh, Stonesy, whatever. Um, and then the second one is dub reggae, uh, because I've been talking to Dom Hawkin and he was, he'd kind of turned me on to some of that stuff. So I thought, well, could I make some music in that style? And the third one is, uh, like pretty generic, uh, eighties alternative rock meets a little bit of hard rock at the end. And then the one that I'll play kind of all the way through is, um, basically my attempt to make, um, kind of an eighties ish um synth pop so my and my musical experience was more more rock and 80s to me was like uh ozzy and van halen and metallica so synth pop stuff was not my thing growing up and so it was kind of me like well let me let me dabble in this and see how it goes so let's see here um and let me know if the volume is okay on this because we didn't try it with the um the mic volume. So if you guys can give me a thumbs up or down to let me know how to adjust the volume, but let's start this somewhere in the middle. So again, I'll just kind of uh, skip ahead through certain parts of this and let the last part play. Hmm. No, uh, not getting audio. Yeah. No sound. Oh. Okay, let me see. Oh, okay, that's probably why here. There it goes. Yes, now. Okay, volume okay. Sound good. Maybe maybe a touch louder.
Nice. And there we have it. Did I hear Very some cool. D fifty at the end there on that one? <laughs> so, so one of my uh, again, just me screwing around. One of the things I had to do was try to fit digitative natal, native dance in there because I've been told that you cannot use that anymore. <laughs> I've used it. I've used it a few times. It's a great sound. <laughs> it's killer. Hey, can you can you go back up to the first the first track that you played? There's um, mm-hmm. there's like a part in that that I was curious about um, mm-hmm. almost like kind of flutes like sounding. Oh yeah. All right. So um, in here I've got uh, easy drummer. Um, the bass is uh, going through P42 and a, a 1176. Okay. Hammond organ. My 1955 Fender lap steel is doing those. Uh, <laughs> That sounds great. Um, Telecaster, which the whole thing was just like kind of, you know, you know, like testing out gear licks. And so there's like this little percussive thing that I, I would play to kind of hear what a, a clean sound would sound like if it was thick and percussive. Mm-hmm. You can hear like the splash of the spring reverb there. Yeah, that sounds cool. Uh, Mrs. Mills piano, that's a uh, Spitfire audio. And so again, like the Beatles sound, that was a piano and Abbey road that the Beatles actually recorded on. And then the, probably what you're talking about was, um, who's using Mtron pro for flutes towards the end of it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Play that riff. That sounded excellent. Let's see. Whatever you want. Just the Mellotron. Yeah. Let me hear it. Let me hear it. Yes. I love that, dude. That's great, so, man. again, like these these songs are not meant to be like super original, but they're to kind of cop the vibe of of certain decades of music. So that again was very you know Beatles, uh, as uh, Ramsey pointed out, Strawberry Fields Forever, yeah. and then also did. Um, a trumpet, which would uh, be very reminiscent of, uh, like, uh, what's the one with, like, the French horn solo? Or, like, Penny Lane or something. Yeah, Penny Lane, yeah. So, again, I just used the Mellotron for that and had a little bit of fun. Um, let's see, not too much to say on this. Uh, let's see, what... I did use like uh, Lunar Lander, which is fun. That's also pl- Pulsar Modular. And so for the guitar part, the funny thing about it is that if you, if you uh, let's see, is this the Echo Guitar? Yeah. So it, as you're hearing it, if I take off this Echo, it sounds pretty boring. So yeah, not too not too exciting there. But then if you add this on, I'm playing against the uh, delay. So kind of an example of how you can use your effects to to really um, be part of the instrument itself. And then of course there's like a bunch of wad guitar on there, um, both rhythm and lead. On the third section, uh, again, pretty straightforward. Um, uh, used a different, I think I used my Stingray on this one. Uh, Telecaster, my Gretsch, which is, uh, oh, I guess you can't see it in that shot right there, but um, that's after I just got it. And then with the Solo, so this was using Neural DSP, and this is basically like a Marshall JMP sound. And it's just a, a preset I created. Um, did some fine tuning with uh, P42, and then of course to make it really 80 sounding, we had to uh, do some micro pitch on it. Plus uh, Valhalla, which is always always Valhalla. So that's <laughs> kind of coming out, and you know you have that. And so, I mean, because we're working from now on, man, that's awesome. (laughs) (laughs) 
you know, because we're working in a dawn, not having to do it live, I, I like to like um, kind of overlap stuff like what Brian May would do. So I had the that solo there, which was done on my Wolfgang, um, you know, dive bombing or however it was ending like uh, there. But then I also did a stereo on these um, dive bombs with uh, some Valhalla. I think I've got... Uh, What's this one here? Okay, so just a stock Logic plug-in here. <laughs> that plus uh, some of the uh, Valhalla reverb. So, you know, just to kind of give it a transition and then the drums bring it in here. So, again, just wanting to use some uh, some different things here. Um, I, I did this with uh, Roland's uh, TR-707. So I was like, well, this is very 80s. And uh, so it ended up sounding like this after I, I processed it, which is, you know, good in 80s. <laughs> yes. And so then became the process. So the, uh, the idea behind this part of the song was um, kind of the mid 80s synth pop. And so tracks like... Um, uh, like Aha's Take On Me, also um, uh, OMD's, uh, what's the uh, bomb, Hiroshima, what's that song? Uh, Enola Gay? That's it, oh, right? Yeah. yeah. So those kind of classic synth lines that are done where they're layering keyboards, at, or well, at least uh, the Aha one was layering, um, and coming up with that kind of melody, and then some of the other tracks that were inspired inspired um that inspired this part of the song would be like uh like radio gaga by queen and so uh let me see what this part is here so just like a simple bass and then this is doing more of the very like out of 80 sounding bass this is uh opx pro 2 with a preset that is really radio gaga Oh, sorry, what's that? I said that's tasty. <laughs> Thanks. So that combined with, uh, let's see. Again, I didn't get to look at this. So we've got, um, we had to hit some of the classic synths. So we had Oberheim. We've got the, uh, uh, the Juno here, which is doing just a kind of a classic pad. Uh, this is really the center point of the song here is this melody part. So this is not too exciting to pull up because it's just Logic Sampler. Um, but what I'm using is, um, if you guys know uh, Jim Daniker um, from the forums and all, uh, you know, who's a, yeah. he's the keyboard director for uh, Michael W. Smith and just a killer keyboard player, but he's done these um, synth packs of classic synthesizers that are, are awesome because he's done a really good job at processing them. So the one that I have is DX Streams, and it's all his various, you know, DX synthesizers and TX and all that kind of stuff. A lot of great sounds on here. So I, I didn't touch a, touch a thing. I just use his uh, Take On Me uh, patch on this. And let me show you what that sounds like. And so that's going through, and that's kind of doing the aha type of sound or, you know, the Enola Gay, where you have a, a little synth melody that's carrying it. Ultimately, as something like this, like I didn't do a lot of those little small transition things because this wouldn't be, if it was created into a song, it, wouldn't, it would be meant to have vocals to it. So the arrangement of this is a little more uh, uh, simple on this uh, compared to, like, uh, the instrumentals that you guys did. And let's see here. Uh, what's oh? Let me check out this. So this is another one here. Oh yeah, we had to. We had to. <laughs> so I basically, you know, I tried to hit a lot of like '80s cliches on here, but it's they work great and they sound wonderful. Oh yeah, come on.
you'll hear that sound a little bit at the end with the Roland D50 kind of fading out. So uh, lastly, I got a couple of guitar tracks in here and I did something that was a little bit interesting on these. So let me... So with that, that's my, my Gretsch Black Penguin. And I'm just trying to find small, uh, like just little triads up high on the neck so it doesn't interfere with the body of it but it creates more of a percussion effect as it's mixed into everything else. So that was a, and it's just slightly dirty. It's pretty clean. It's got a dimension D going on here, uh, just to give it some stereo spread and make it nice and eighties and chorusy. So that was what I started with. And then I began thinking again, because trying to use the tools that I have, um, this plugin again, which is a neural DSP, uh, archetype, Tim Henson, don't really care about Tim Henson, but this amp in here is great. And so uh, it has this effect in here called the multi-voicer, which is just uh, basically a stereo intelligent pitch shifter. So mm -hmm. I had this idea and I was doing just the, the I, I think I had double tracked the Gretsch for the rhythm guitars. And I thought, um, what if I did something that was a little bit different? And the inspiration came from um, Def Leppard, and when they recorded uh, Hysteria, the little pre, I think it's a pre chorus section where it was, da, 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 uh, it would be like. So, I mean, they would do that live, but the thing is, when they recorded it, they wanted it to sound a little more like a synthesizer, and so what they did is they did every single string on the guitar. Um, recorded on a separate track, played individually, so it'd be like, or, you know, or you know, whatever it was, so that the attack of the the um, of that of those chords were not like a guitar where you strum through it to kind of exaggerate, but it would be more like it was plucked like a like you were playing on a keyboard, and yeah, so yeah. that kind of gave me an idea. Uh -huh. And so uh, yes, Magic Box Studios, yeah, Mutt Lang, of course brilliant on that album um so that gave me the idea it's like what if i did that but instead of recording all the tracks i did that i played a rhythm part with basically what's a lead guitar harmonizer <laughs> and so um i played part of the rhythm part with um uh, again with that effect there and then a little bit of micro pitch after it so it ends up sounding like So that's all I'm playing there, one note at a time. Mm. That's combined with that Gretsch rhythm guitar track. And so I thought that created kind of an interesting sound. Again, very 80s, very Mutt Lang inspired. And then the outro uh, for this uh, would, again, just, you know, using stuff that I um, had just got at the time, you know, along with uh, P42, again, the micro pitch and some Valhalla delay and a little bit of Valhalla reverb for the solo. And then, um, so it, it's my, my ES-335. There's nothing like really remarkable to say about that. It's just like a pretty standard, you know, kind of 80s guitar sound. But more the composition composition of it was again the challenge of bringing elements of these decades into the song. So, uh, for instance, you know, like bringing the mellotrons and the strawberry fields forever. And with this, I kind of copped a '80s melody or maybe late '70s also um, melody. But I I removed some of the notes and then kind of did a variation on it. So the goal was to make it sound familiar but not to be copied of something else and let me play that so it's a, probably a little bit easier to hear when it's soloed without all the other music there but basically i was taking kind of a, the star wars theme and uh make it uh, into yeah. a solo of a, <laughs> of a synth pop now. song <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. So in, in context, oops. And 
so there's that kind of Queen type of bass line going at the end with the kind of Star Wars-y guitar. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the the ultimate cliches of the uh, DX7 bell with the D50 uh, digital native dance to, to finish it off. I love the D50 <laughs> at the end. Right. That's great, so, man. That's about it. <laughs> It was it was kind of fun to do just you know so many different the different styles and stuff and um and again like I, I really enjoyed using the the DX streams on there and just kind of as a study of using um our, the the gear that we have and, and by gear I mean not just physical gear but our our plugins and to see if we can use those to the max and so for me that was the P42 as well as like the neural DSP and the micro pitch, like, let me see how I can use these in different ways in the track. Instead of going to 50 different things, let me try to try, try to work these into it. Yeah, that was great usage of those really creative and, and perfect. What channel has the cowbell? Uh oh, was there cowbell in here? Did anybody use cowbell? It's usually track 23. Hearing cowbell there. I, I think it's a, I think it's a joke. <laughs> I, I mean, I, I could have used cowbell. I, that's why I was looking. I mean, that's that's a there's a cliche that uh, is good to use. <laughs> uh, yeah. I like cowbells. They're pretty cool. They're great. Come on, don't don't sell them short. I mean, that's a funny bit with Will Ferrell, but like, in, <laughs> but like cowbells. Come on. Yeah, they're just they're only second, I think, to tambourines in terms of the percussion world of what's made a hit song. Tambourine would be the no <laughs> tambourine's the number one. Number one. Yeah, yeah. People I think really should talk about it more. But. I, I I think <laughs> along with uh, don't guys okay, along <laughs> along with is never a joke. <laughs> <laughs> well, well said. <laughs> I always think of along with uh, "Don't Fear the Reaper." I always think of uh, what's that Nazareth song? Um, is it "Hair of the Dog" or something? It uh, oh, has a kind of day tripper riff, but it just got that like "dong dong dong dong" on the key <laughs> bell. <laughs> Love it! Oh my god, so many good cowbell songs. It reminds me of like Fleetwood Mac. Like they had that one song where they're hammering away in a cowbell. <laughs> It's the ones where they're just hammering away though that are the best. Like, like <laughs> honky tonk women, you know, that starts off with, you know, <laughs> but that's like a, it's, it's like oh a big, yeah, it's, yeah, it's like a good, it's like a good part, right? It, but w what you really need is just that and the thrusting hips. <laughs> the, the thrusting hips of Will Ferrell. <laughs> <laughs> or whoever's playing it yes yeah, so yeah it was hair of the dog and then uh brian says uh mississippi queen also yeah oh yeah there's so many oh my god yeah a, 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 like every other 70s song after that it wasn't allowed to be used again it was banned <laughs> yeah <laughs> except for, for when it years. Except for when it was a Lindrum cowbell, and then it got yeah. used again. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, it got used like crazy. Yeah, we have to, we have to try to find a, a cowbell song, like, after 1989. <laughs> that would be a little bit harder. Yeah, now we're, yeah, now that's getting challenging. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that'll be my assignment. I'll try to find something in the 90s that was a prominent, like, a hit song that had cowbell With prominent. Cowbell? I, th I think that's like a, a sampler challenge there. Like, make a song completely out of cowbell, you know. By... I, know. I can think of one right off the top of my head. Come on. I think it had cowbell in it. I think Come on. It would be like. Who, who, was, the, who was the one that's on that? Uh, unbelievable or whatever. You're unbelievable. Oh. Oh, oh yeah. 90s, 90s. Yeah. Yeah, that's got some cowbell in it, doesn't it? Was that early 90s or. That's definitely 90s. Oh, it's 90s. I think it's got cowbell in it. I think it does. It's you know, I can hear it, but I'd have to listen to the song. Cowbell is never a joke. <laughs> don't, don't even laugh at cowbell. Oh, man. 
Uh, so, uh, Magic Box Studios, uh, no hex fuzz distortion. It was just the single note was being processed by by the uh, uh, JMP Marshall style amp, and then the pitch shifter did everything else on there. Nice. Well, guys, gentlemen, what do you think? I think it's about that time to break forth the rhythm and the rhyme. <laughs> nothing. <laughs> I like it. I like it. Anyways, yeah, that was a good show, guys. I really appreciate you guys uh, showing off some of your tunes. It was a good time. Thank you, everyone in the chat, for showing up and uh, chatting with us and, and uh, you know, sitting through our tunes and listening to us break them down. Hopefully, it's some information is helpful in there. I know so, it was yeah. for me. Yeah. yeah. So I, always learn, I always learn stuff from you guys. So yeah, thanks for sharing those. It was cool, and, and always from people in the chat too, man. And we we have a a small but mighty chat room, don't we? It's like yes, <laughs> they're mighty. Uh, and Marshall, you're gonna post that song at some point. Yeah, I'm gonna. Well, since it's finished now, <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll go ahead and push it out through my label. Um, it's going to take a few weeks for that to get done because I'll have to work on some artwork and stuff. But, yeah, I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Yeah, just Excellent. say if anybody wants to hear more music by these two talented guys, the in the description box there's links to their channels and to mine as well. But uh, you can check those out. And also because StreamYard audio is so crappy, you would probably want to go back and, and hear these things in stereo. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please do. Uh, and if you guys are, you know, want to want to wrap with us a little more, we got the um, uh, Throughport Collective Facebook page. Go ahead and join on that, and uh, yeah, I guess we'll see you guys next week. All right, sounds All good. Right. Enjoyed it. Everybody, Bye, take care. Take care. Bye. <laughs>